Good morning, folks. Ken Ring of www.predictweather.com. It's the 26th of July, and the moon is in Aquarius at the moment. You'll see it there, just directly above the sun, um, which means it's full moon time, and it's full moon tonight. And it will be at its highest point in the sky, almost exactly at midnight, wherever you are. And that's how you can tell it's the full moon, because every full moon night at midnight, it's exactly due north in the sky, uh, if you're in the southern hemisphere, and it's exactly due south if you're in the northern hemisphere. It used to be a direction compass system for travellers at night. It only happens on the full moon night, at midnight. It's directly north or south. The skies should be fairly clear as well, uh, and that's another thing that happens wherever you are on Earth. Uh, and it's, r it's rare to have clouds around midnight on a full moon night. And if there are some, then they should only be very low in the sky and thin, and you should still be able to see the moon. The old saying was that the full moon eats clouds. It was an old nautical saying, and it's usually true. Uh, that's, and the reason for it, because everything's got a reason, is because the moon lifts the air up by its gravitational pull just as it lifts the sea. And there are king tides in the sea around the full moon, uh, bigger tides, bigger tidal variations, and they know that there are king tides in the air because the weather balloons float higher on the new moon and the full moon nights. OK, so when the air is lifted, it pushes away the cold of the evening, and the colder air, being heavier, is trying to fall uh, all the uh, all the time, but the air coming up from the ground, uh, which is warmed by the day's sunshine on the ground, stops it, stops that cooler air from coming down. So the more air you get coming off the ground, bigger volume of warmer air, then the less colder air you're going to get coming down, able to get through. And it's that colder air that condenses the water vapour any time to form clouds. So you actually get less clouds being able to form on the full moon night. Now there'll be no shortage of clouds during the day because the air height is lower during the day because the moon doesn't rise until sunset and the colder air during the day can descend without too much of that warm air in the way. Now the winter moon is a high one in the, north, in the southern hemisphere uh, in, uh, what I mean is it's higher in the sky in the southern hemisphere but when it goes below the horizon that's as it sets in the morning um, it doesn't go too far below the horizon uh, because on the other side of the world they're having their summer and the summer full moon doesn't rise much above the horizon in the summer sky so it means for the southern hemisphere that in the winter on the day when the full moon sets Remember, the full moon sets in the early morning. Well, the moon being not far below the horizon keeps the air there that was cooled from the night before when the ground lost its heat from the sun. And if the moon went way below the horizon uh, in the morning, well, it would allow that sun, the heat of the sun in the daytime to come right down closer to the ground. But because it only parks itself just below the horizon, the day stays cool. In the winter time, the day stays cool. This moon, this full moon this month, is called the Thunder Moon in the Northern Hemisphere because it's quite typical for it to be a warm summer evening and then in the distance a stroke of lightning might lunge to earth and the air might shake with thunder and at that moment the clouds kind of part like a couple of curtains to reveal a brilliant full moon. Now, it sounds too good to be true and a bit Hollywood, but, hey, it could happen tonight. Um, but there's a really big chance, because it's full moon, of the moon being, of the sky being clear anyway. Whether or not you get that thunder and that, um, and that other stuff, you know, you could be lucky to see that. Uh, anyway, go out and watch for it. Something else to watch for, too. Around 8.30 tonight, just after sunset, if you look just north of due west, you'll see Venus coming down, setting below the horizon. Now, if you're watching from the southern hemisphere, 
just about exactly above Venus, you'll see Mars follow it down. And just above that and slightly to the right, you'll see Saturn, big bright star, chasing Mars down. And on the 30th and the 31st of this month, also around 8.30pm, you'll see Mars draw level with Saturn like a couple of headlights and um, of a car, and they both come down together. It's quite a pretty sight. But if you're watching from the Northern Hemisphere, you'll s at that tonight, you'll see Mars above and to the left of Venus, and Saturn above and to the left of Mars. And Venus will be really bright for you Northern Hemisphere watchers, uh, and you Southern Hemisphere watchers, you'll see a much brighter Saturn than the Northern Hemisphere folk. So, uh, something to look for in the skies tonight. Thanks for watching me, uh, everybody. I hope I see you tomorrow.